how to launch your coaching business from scratch. This is a video that will go through a lot of those fundamentals of what you need to do to launch your coaching business if you're looking to get started and develop yourself as a coach in any capacity. There are three things that we'll use in this system um, to help you to make that forward progression and also this one big thing to avoid if you want to make that progress within coaching. These three things that we have in this system are going to be designed around thinking things in a more holistic way. Many coaches fail because they aren't aware of these things and we'll go through some obvious and some technical things of what you can do to be more effective. The first things first is going to be helping you to get some credibility. So many coaches out there are wanting to make an impact and help other people. I myself learn from a lot of information reading books by the likes of Tony Robbins, Bob Proctor and more. And it's a real game changer for me and I felt fulfilled. But that's not enough. That doesn't mean I'm now qualified to help other people because I've got some learnings for myself. Coaching qualifications are your foundational tools that you'll eventually use to help other people. You know, learning 60 plus hours of information that is designed and has been improved upon for decades that will really allow you to sit down with any client and have consistent results. This is the first part of the process, having that expert information and provide true value. A lot of the coaches that we work with have those light bulb moments that maybe make the coaching seem easy and obvious from then on that they wouldn't have thought about previously without having the training. Whether it's by the coaching structures, the processes, how you address a question or a difficult client, plus many more things. The second thing here is embracing discomfort. Many coaches that are wanting to get started do not get started because they feel things like the imposter syndrome that is in their way. They feel like they aren't sure about how to use things like social media, marketing, branding, sales, all are scary words for them. So what they do is rather than lean into them, they move away. And this is something that really prevents them from making progress because they don't make the necessary changes that are required to grow their coaching business and yet they hope that things just change because they have a positive mindset, they want to do well. Realistically it's not enough, you have to really understand what are those things that can move the needle for you, things that can get you in front of your audience as well as all those other bits with your mindset, the limiting belief. Think about the first time that you learn how to swim or ride a bike. It's nerve-wracking, it's difficult to do, a lot of people fall down, you need help, you need assistance along the way. Having armbands, having stabilizers on the bike makes that journey easier. So a coaching program can do just that, getting training can do just that, but avoiding the situation entirely because you're nervous, it just isn't the right thing for you. We have to embrace discomfort because we'll help other people to do the same thing as well. And the third big thing that we'll talk about today is developing a winning mindset. This is what we call a winning mindset because it covers three core areas. You've got your POE system within this, which stands for positivity, opportunities and education. Developing this winning mindset means that when you sit down with somebody, whether it's in a professional relationship or just in general, they'll look at you and think, wow, that person's got something that I'm interested in. They've got a strength of presence, they've got knowledge, they've got passion, they've got interest and intellect, which is a really, really important thing. So your POE stands for your positivity. Having a smile, being open-minded towards things and leaning again into things that could challenge you, but think about what could be good about this outcome, about what is gonna be here for you. And that means that when you're working with difficult challenges and problems, you have and carry that attitude with you. So staying positive and expressing that emotion that's within you rather than being overly reserved. The second thing, the O, is going to be the opportunities for a lot of coaches. Now, coaches let opportunities slip by them all of the time because they aren't really sure about how to be assertive. Having that call to action, they bump into somebody that they think they can really help and they say something like, if you're interested, um, get in touch and we can have a follow-up. 
And that coach thinks that they've given a sales opportunity to that person, but that person simply sees it as them being polite. They say, thanks very much, and then just move on with the rest of their life. But in actual fact, you have to be a bit more direct with people because sometimes it's not obvious that that person really does want to help us. And that potential coach and client might just feel nervous about getting in touch. So you have to give them clear steps. For example, I really enjoyed this conversation and think that you could get a lot of value from coaching. You've got some challenges, some problems. I've got a great event coming up that you can come to that I think will help you to solve a lot of that. Or we can jump on a quick call next week when I've got some time and we can have a deep dive for half an hour and just go through a lot of the coaching things I think can really benefit you to move forward. And it's not salesy, it's not too hard, it's not too assertive. It's just you taking an opportunity. And opportunities come in a lot of different shapes and forms, whether it is networking and meeting new people, whether it is going to events and, you know, as a public speaking opportunity might have come up, you lean into it, even though you might be nervous. And they do say that public speaking is a greater fear than death itself. And I understand that as a public speaker, but it's often the way for you to get in front of a lot of people, have a nice authority status and provide real value. And that leads us into that third piece, the E, which is your education. For a lot of coaches, it's an ongoing process of learning, developing and improving, whether it is your mindset, your coaching skills or your skills at spreading your message to a wider audience. We have to learn this because there's no good in you being the best coach in the world if nobody knows who you are. Being a mystery isn't a great thing when it comes to being a coach. People have to be able to find you and come across you if you want to help and support them. We have things like social media, YouTube and many more these days that a lot of people can start learning and using if they take the right steps, but many of them are nervous about doing just that. So we've got the POE um, that can really help you to develop that winning mindset as a coach and you'll find that once you take all of that on board, people will start to gravitate towards you and things become much easier. Now the big thing we've been building up to is the one thing to avoid here. And the big thing that you need to avoid really is winging it. A lot of coaches read that personal development book, they watch a YouTube video by Jim Rohn, feel like they're able to start helping and provide real value. But in actual fact, you don't have that skill just yet. You might be a good listener, you might have empathy, you might be able to ask a few questions, but realistically, it's like learning to build a house. I could get a brick, put some cement and put it down the floor and eventually try to build a wall because it seems obvious and easy, but as a lot of bricklayers will understand, it's not as simple as that. There are certain techniques that you need to do, it's what happens after you lay the first brick that's important, timing plays a factor, but there's a reason why coaches spend at least 60 hours on training programs, learning these skills to simply help people. So don't just wing it because the problem with winging it is what we see from the industry is you have these three archetypes. This first archetype is the highly professional person. This is the person that is great at coaching. They've got all the skills. They know how to carry themselves in a the conversation. They've really invested in probably multiple training courses. So they feel very comfortable. They've had a ton of practice with real people. So when you sit down with them, they feel at ease and so do you. The second archetype is the enthusiast. These are people that have got a lot of energy. They've got a lot of value to offer. They've been through a good coaching program. So they've got skills to bring to the table and they're still on their early developmental phase, but they can provide great help. They feel reasonably at ease and they've got good skills. And as a result, you feel comfortable and you can open up to them. It's a really, really good first step to be in either one of those. But the third step, the third archetype here is the amateur. These are people with no real skills. There's no real outcome from a coaching conversation. It often becomes frustrating. And maybe what often happens is they start to become mentors. They start to give advice and telling people what to do based on their own experiences, their own background. And it's a real problem because as you can imagine, something that works for one person may not work so well for the next person. And that's a real problem if you're a coach because you want to provide great value and not just tell people what to do because they won't take responsibility for that action. That's why we help them through these coaching skills so they can find the answer for themselves. 
So, do you want to be a person that is winging it, or do you want to become a great coach that is an enthusiast, or a highly professional one that provides real value? If you're in that second category, keep listening. We have um, events that are coming up really soon to help you get started with coaching. And on those events, you'll learn in a full day experience and we'll break down all of the things that you can do to get started with coaching. We'll discuss the mindset of coaches. We'll discuss how you can build your credibility through qualifications and those next steps after that. And your coaching foundations of building a business. So learning how to get set up with marketing, branding and the like. Our courses are really unique because we have a lot of experiences that last a full year on this training program. Some courses may sell you the dream that you can become a millionaire coach in a few months, but the reality is it takes time to build that and you need a lot of support. So there are many coaches out there that have taken great qualification courses but now are stuck knowing what to do next. So our courses are really holistic and that's what separates us from the crowd. You'll learn about how to have the skills, your mindset, but also the coaching business and how to build that. And we'll be there for a year, holding your hand, guiding you with events and training once you get on board with the programs. And we even will provide you with real clients to work with to get real practice. And we even built software around this to get you started. So if you're curious to learn more, to meet the Speak Up Challenge community, book into one of our free introduction days. You'll see the link on the screen and we can take that next step forward. The Speak Up Challenge has helped over 10,000 people with their journey to become coaches, whether it's life coaching, relationship coaching, career coaching or more. We'll help you to figure out what those next steps are. And we are very passionate about community, helping you with that holistic big picture to take those next steps forward. People love us. We've got pages and pages of five star reviews and have helped many, many thousands of coaches um, become coaches from just having a goal and a dream. They now are on that path to being coaches and providing real value. So if it seems interesting, book on, you'll see that link. It's a really good, valuable session and you'll also get links and information for the Speak Up Challenge in general if you want any more.